I hope you're having a great day. So when it comes to weight loss, still the most Google word is weight loss and fat loss. And we have so much of information, knowledge, wisdom. We have so many diets available, exercise programs, supplements that claim weight loss, and yet people struggle to lose weight and to burn fat. Or we lose weight and we put it all back on again. <clears throat> we understand today that it is your lifestyle that is the most important thing when it comes to losing weight and keeping it off. Now, when we look at the human body, sometimes we need to step back and wonder that when we start gaining weight and we're in unable to lose it, you know, why is our body doing this? Why are our cells holding on to fat? No matter what we do, we're unable to lose that weight or burn that fat. So we can constantly chase one diet after another. We can constantly change our personal trainers and our exercise programs. We can spend hours and hours Googling new techniques to lose weight look for supplements that claim weight loss, but they don't exist. I'm telling you that right now, because if they existed, we would know about it and everyone would do that and everyone would lose weight. The human body is a beautiful instrument. <clears throat> it's got an intelligence of its own. If you are putting on weight, okay, your body is putting on weight because there is improper communication between your cells and your hormones. Very few cases there are medical disorders or metabolic syndromes that make you put on that weight. But for everyone else, it is your lifestyle, it is the environment of your cells and the communication between your cells that are not functioning the right way. So what happens is we have switches called genes in our body. We can turn on those genes and we can turn those genes off. So we can turn on a gene or a hormone that will make us gain weight. For example, we have leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is a hormone that enables us to feel full. So we don't feel hungry and we don't eat unnecessary calories. <clears throat> so when leptin is turned on in your body, you will not overeat, you will not consume more calories and you will not put on weight. Then you have ghrelin, which is also a hunger hormone. Now if that hormone is turned on more than it should be, we're constantly hungry, we're eating sugars, we're eating carbs, we're eating quick, you know, fast food, junk food that makes us feel good. So these hormones are the reasons <clears throat> why we put on weight even though we're exercising well and even though we're eating the right kind of food. Now there are several hormones in the human body and the one that I'm gonna to talk to you today about today should be activated in our systems if we are looking at burning fat. I'm not talking about losing weight, I'm talking about burning fat. You see, I'm not a fan of the weighing scale, I'm not a fan of the word weight loss because it's very easy to get someone to lose weight. We can put you on a diuretic and make you flush out water. You drop one kilo, two kilos, or three kilos on the, on the weighing scale and you'll be happy. But that's not weight loss, you've just lost water weight. Some people go through fat diets, they lose muscle mass. You will drop a kilo, two kilos, or three kilos because you've lost muscle mass, but you've not lost fat. Some people lose bone density and they drop their overall weight. So I'm not a fan of weight loss. I'm not a fan of the weighing scale. I'm a fan of fat loss, inches. Are you shrinking? Are you losing inches? Are your clothes getting looser for you? Are people complimenting you and saying, hey, your face is gone and you're looking leaner. Have you lost weight? That means you've lost fat, inches. That is what we should focus on. <clears throat> there is a hormone, it's called adiponectin. Adiponectin, A-D-I-P-O-N-E-C-T-I-N. All of us have it in, but most of us don't have it activated. Now this hormone, the job of this hormone is to burn fat. When this hormone is released, and this hormone is stored in your fat cell, when you are able to release and activate this hormone, it burns fat. So for the longest time, the world made us believe that fat makes you fat, but today we know that fat burns fat. In fact, people who go on low-fat diets or no-fat or oil-free diets are the ones who do not lose weight. In fact, they start looking older, they lose their hair, they start aging rapidly, their skin changes. Fat burns fat, the good quality fat. You have bad quality fat like all your refined oils, all your junk food, your trans fats, that will make you gain fat. But your good fats like your cold pressed oils, your nuts, your seeds, your avocado, your salmons, all of that stuff will help you activate this hormone to burn fat. So number one, good fat burns fat. There's something more interesting about this hormone I'm talking about. Scientifically, this hormone also basically controls the metabolism of insulin in your body, which means it is great and needed for people with diabetes. Okay, diabetes is not just about your high blood sugar levels and your low blood sugar levels. How can you harness the hormones in your body to work for you? How can you harness your body to work for your weight and to burn your fat? 
rather than relying on just diets and all these complicated methods and stuff like that. So when you release this hormone called adiponectin, okay, it also increases insulin sensitivity in your system, which means it communicates with your cells. Insulin communicates with your cells to open up and take in blood sugar, sugar from your blood so that your blood sugar levels are maintained. A lot of people have insulin insensitivity issues or insulin resistance where your insulin which is a hormone, is not communicating with your cells and they don't open up the cells to put the sugar in so your blood sugar levels rise. So it plays a huge role for diabetics for maintaining your insulin levels, maintaining and preventing fat gain in your cells. It also plays a huge role in metabolizing your lipids. What are your lipids? Your cholesterol levels, your bad cholesterol, your LDL, your healthy cholesterol levels, your HDL and your triglycerides. So your cholesterol levels, your lipids are also regulated by this one hormone. So how can we activate this hormone so it works for our cardiovascular health, for our fat loss and maintaining our weight and our sugar levels and our insulin? And like I said, insulin is a hormone. It communicates your pancreas, your blood sugar levels, your cells. Tyroxine that our thyroid gland produces is also a hormone. So when people have a thyroid pro problem, you have a hormonal issue you have a hormonal issue. Everything is about hormones in your body. Let's get straight into solution mode. How do you activate this hormone to be released by your fat cells so that they can burn fat, regulate the metabolism of your lipids, your blood sugar levels, and even your carbohydrates? Everyone's scared of carbohydrates today. We go back 15 years ago, people had carbohydrates at lunch, breakfast, and dinner, and they were slim, they were fit, they had no disease, and everything was fine. The problem is not carbohydrates. The problem is the wrong quality of carbohydrates, eating it at the wrong time, eating too much of it, and not having the right hormones that regulate the breakdown of carbohydrates. You have enzymes that break down carbohydrates. If you're not producing those enzymes, your carbohydrates become bad for you. You have hormones that regulate the breakdown of our carbohydrates, like the one I'm talking about. If you don't activate it, it doesn't break down your carbohydrates. Everything we eat has to be broken down. Carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So the beauty is carbohydrates will also be broken down by this hormone. Number one, your omega-3. I spoke about omega-3 for your brain health. We need the right amount of omega-3. For vegetarians, you get it in flax seeds, you get it in supplements, you get it in uh, walnuts. For non-vegetarians, you will get it in fatty fish like sardines, mackerel, salmon, or you'll get it into a, into a supplement form. If you're doing a supplement, get a good quality supplement, but please understand, most people need omega-3 for brain function and to stimulate this. So a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of models, they use omega-3 because it is used to activate this hormone to help them burn fat. So omega-3 is extremely important. It's your choice whether you wanna get it from a supplement or it's your choice whether you wanna get it from a natural food. Fiber, again, most people don't even meet their recommended daily allowance of fiber. Most people are fiber deficient because most people are on fat programs today that tell them don't eat fruits, cut down a certain amount of vegetables, don't eat nuts because nuts make you fat and all of that stuff. So we are fiber deficient. And because we're fiber deficient, only by increasing the fiber or having the right amount of fiber in your system, you will activate this hormone to burn fat in your body. Now understand, if you have IBS, you have gut issues and stuff like that, too much of fiber may be actually be bad for you. So you need to make an informed decision, but you need to get your vegetables, you need to get your fruits, you need to get your nuts, your seeds, your grains, your lentils and your legumes. That is a balanced, healthy diet that people have eaten for the longest time without any health problems, without any weight problems. What's caused the change is all the complication, the substandard products, the fat programs, excess stress in our life, sleep deprivation, sedentary lifestyles. Don't blame the food, blame your lifestyle. So get the right amount of fiber. The next thing that activates this hormone is exercise. Now the beauty is you don't have to do intense exercise, even walking combined with yoga, swimming, dance, half an hour of dance, Pilates, weight training, all of these simple exercises that we should be doing is enough to stimulate the release of this hormone and it works for you. Combined with exercise is good sleep. We know that sleep deprivation or poor quality sleep impacts every hormone in your body, including this. So if you wanna activate and release this hormone, you gotta get good quality sleep at night. 
Very important, if you're exercising more, you need to recover more. So if you're exercising more and running marathons and sleeping three to four hours in a night and think you're doing a great thing, it is impacting you. And all those runners out there who run with pot bellies and claim they're running marathons and sleep three hours and they're healthy, why do you have a pot belly? It's simple, your body is not burning fat. If you are running marathons and you're a runner, you should have the physique of a runner, period. If you don't, you're doing it wrong. It's as simple as that. So exercise, recovery, and sleep, extremely important to activate this hormone. Coffee, I've spoken about black coffee. The unfortunate part is when you add milk to your coffee, you remove many bioactives from the coffee. Good quality organic black coffee. I'm saying organic because coffee is the most sprayed crop. It is sprayed with so many pesticides. One pesticide called endosulfin, which has every connection. It's banned in most countries. It's allowed in several countries that produce and import coffee and export coffee, coffee to other com uh, countries. Please get good quality coffee. If you like coffee, enjoy it. It's like wine. Enjoy good quality wine. Just don't, enjoy, you know, just don't have it for the sake of having it. Get a good black coffee that is that is absolutely necessary for you to release this hormone. But if you're not a coffee drinker and you don't want to start, you don't have to do that because even tea does that. Good black tea, good quality green tea can also release this hormone. If you don't drink coffee and you don't drink tea, there are several options that I'm giving you right now that you can do over and above that. So you don't have to do things that you don't like or you don't want to. There are several other options. Okay, turmeric. Turmeric is absolutely fantastic to release this hormone. So make sure that you have curcumin, make sure you have turmeric in your food, in your daily diet to release this. Carbohydrates. People who go too low on carbohydrates and they don't balance their protein and fats. A lot of people can go low carbohydrates, but they have to compensate with more fat and more protein. But most people don't do that. They cut down protein or they increase protein, but they cut down fat and carbohydrates and they never get their results. You create a hormonal imbalance. So if you're having an early dinner, make sure you have some amount of carbohydrate with it because carbohydrates, good carbohydrates are also required to release this hormone from your fat into your bloodstream to burn fat. So yes, carbohydrates can also burn fat because carbohydrates provide you with energy. Fat burn requires a lot of energy. You can get that from good fats, you can get that from proteins, but if you don't wanna give, give up your carb, don't go carb free at night. If you're having a late dinner, absolutely go carb free. If you're having an early dinner, you're doing a circadian rhythm fast, have a little bit of carbohydrate. Believe me, you will still lose weight because you need good quality carbohydrates for your hormones to function. Zinc. Adding zinc to your diet in the form of a supplement, or you can get zinc in almonds, peanuts, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, green leafy vegetables. Make sure you have the right amount of zinc in your system to release this. Avocados are absolutely fantastic. For all the Indians over here who say, oh, it's not local, you should now know that avocados also grow in Chennai and South India and other places without pesticides and it's absolutely fine. Connect with farmers who are doing ethical farming, Avocados grow in our own country and you can consume them. They are absolutely fantastic fats that help you release this, this particular hormone into your bloodstream. Chocolate, all the chocolate lovers out there, but quality chocolate, raw cacao nibs, raw cacao powder, 80 to 90% dark chocolate, good quality, is great for your DNA, it is great for your immunity, it is great for your microbiome, and it is great for fat loss. It releases this hormone to help you burn fat. Olive oil is a fantastic oil. So is coconut, so is groundnut, cold press. No refined oils at all. But adding olive oil to your hummus, adding olive oil to your salads, these are things that can help you release that hormone. Pumpkin, make yourself a nice warm pumpkin soup, especially in the winter season, have pumpkin vegetables because pumpkin is fantastic for your immunity and releasing this hormone into your system. And peanuts, if you don't have an allergy to peanuts, dry roasted peanuts without salt is fantastic for you. <clears throat> So you can get peanut butter, peanut butter, the only ingredient on your peanut butter bottle should be peanuts, maybe a little bit of pink salt for taste, no hydrogenated fat, no sugar, nothing else. You, you turn, if you're buying peanut butter, if you're not making it at home, you look at the ingredient label. It should have organic peanuts, maybe a little bit of pink salt and nothing else. That is pure peanut butter. If you look at all the commercially available peanut butters, they will have sugar, hydrogenated fats, flavoring, and all of that stuff. That is not peanut butter that is gonna work for you. If you don't wanna do peanut butter, 
have a couple of peanuts, dry roasted as your evening snack along with your fruit. So you see, when we eat a balanced diet, all the foods I've spoken about are normal foods that you would naturally have if you are eating a balanced diet. If you're doing a fat diet, you're not gonna find most of these ingredients in your fat diet. Fat diets do not work. You empower your body to use its own intelligence, which is its hormones, to work for you, to work for your immunity, your fat loss, your hair, your skin, everything, because that's how the human body was designed. We are not smarter than the intelligence of our body. No nutritionist, no doctor, no scientist is yet figured out the intelligence of the human body. So let's keep it simple and see how we can empower our own bodies to work for us. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.